What is up? What is up? What is up? Welcome to the Mitch Davis Show. It is college baseball NCAA tournament time. Regional preview with the one and only uh, Jake McKeever is going to be joining me momentarily to talk about all the college baseball regionals and recap of the conference tournaments. A lot of exciting things going on in the world of college baseball. I'm your host, Mitch Davis, founder of the Mitch Davis Show.com, podcast host of the Mitch Davis Show. You can follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. Before we get into any interviews whatsoever, though, we have to uh, acknowledge our wonderful and amazing sponsors at the Cotton States Baseball League. It is opening weekend of the Cotton States Baseball League here in New Albany, Mississippi at BNA Park. It all gets underway Friday night at 6 p.m. A great weekend of baseball is coming. I mean, it really is just going to be a great weekend leading up to an incredible summer of college baseball here in New Albany, Mississippi. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing broadcasting, podcasts, articles, uh, featured pieces on players. It's going to be an incredible uh, summer at the Cotton States Baseball League. Before I get into the interview with Jake, I want to just encourage you again to check out the website, TheMitchDavisShow.com, podcast on YouTube at The Mitch Davis Show, and also to follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore Eight. I am joined now by Jake McKeever on the Mitch Davis Show, NCAA tournament time for the college baseball regionals. Jake, how are you doing? Welcome on the Mitch Davis Show. Mitch, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's it's almost 7 o'clock here on Selection Sunday. And I'm still having to pinch myself that we made it here in the postseason. So excited to be here. I want to, want to say you guys do the Lord's work there at uh, College Baseball Central. Uh, wonderful uh, college baseball website show. You guys do a lot of great work. Just briefly tell the people what you do for College Baseball Central and where can they find all of your work heading into the regionals? Of course. So all of our stuff's can be on collegebaseballcentral.com as well as links it on Twitter. And I kind of focus on more of the Texas schools. I also do some ACC stuff with another writer that we have, Monty, an SEC show with Alex. And then I also do the mega threads. That was kind of my claim to fame this week, which took a ton of work to do just to kind of track to see who was in, who was out. So that one took up a ton of my time. But follow the Twitter, College Baseball Central. That's where everything will be. So we got a uh, we got a bracket. We've got 64 teams. We've got some teams that got snubbed. But before that, any uh, any shockers in the conference tournament plays that really stand out to you heading into the NCAA tournament? I think the Charlotte over DBU one was really shocking to me because I know that Charlotte's been a team that we've talked about a ton with Cam Fisher, that they really banged the ball around the yard and they've had a really disappointing season. And then DBU also fighting to kind of be in that regional host. And when I was there at the Conference USA tournament, I mean, DBU had a very professional approach. and I thought there was no way that they lose it. So it was really shocking to see Charlotte win that one. And then obviously the big one, Xavier over UConn. I think that Everybody had just kind of penciled in UConn to win the whole thing, and Xavier came up and, and punched him in the mouth and beat him twice. So let me uh, let me ask you about this uh, NCAA tournament bracket. Obviously, Wake Forest comes in as number one seed overall. Is this a Wake Forest team that you see that will get to Omaha and you know maybe even finish and, and win a national championship? Because I know it's been a while since the number one overall seed has won a national championship. You know, on paper, Wake Forest does a lot of things. They have one of the best pitching staffs in a year where everybody seems to be struggling to get outs. Then they also bang the ball around the yard. But the committee did them no favors. I mean, they have Maryland, who knocked them out last year, and then Northeastern. And then when you look at the other side of their bracket, looking at a super regional, Nichols beat LSU. Troy just went through a gauntlet in the Sun Belt. BC is definitely a little bit pissed off and Nick that they're probably not hosting. And then Alabama, one of the hottest teams in the country since they fired their coach. I mean, that's a tough draw for Wake Forest with those other teams in there. Look it down a little bit on this bracket. Obviously, you've got Miami as a one seed, Maine, uh, Louisiana, and Texas are there in the Coral Gables regional. What do you expect to see out of the Longhorns? Uh, can they get out of the Coral Gables uh, region? I think that one's going to be very interesting because Texas is going to have a very thin bullpen. Two of their main guys are going to be out with injuries, and then they have another guy hitting the portal. The thing that will be most exciting for me in this Texas series is is to see how they kind of pitch Lucas Gordon, who has been their bona fide ace, Big 12 pitcher of the year. He, he keeps him in a game, allows about two or three runs max. So I wonder if they save him 
or if they use him to get through that Louisiana Raging Cajun. But again, I think that's one of the benefits of being a number one is you get to save that starting pitcher. So David Pierce has a really great challenge with Texas to see how he uses Lucas Gordon there. Let me ask you, as a Texas person, and, you know, everybody talks about conference realignment. We've heard a lot of that this spring. But Texas, as of July, or actually, yeah, as of next year, they're going to be in the Southeastern Conference playing baseball. I think it's next year when they start playing Southeastern Conference baseball. What do you expect uh, to see out of the Longhorns? Will they come into the Southeastern Conference and automatically compete in baseball? So that one's going to be a really interesting debate because when you look at Texas and a and joined the SEC, they have a losing record against SEC teams that they play. But the flip side of that is Texas always seems to rise to the occasion with every single conference that they're in. I mean, they can sit here and say that they have bad losses, but at the same time, they swept Texas Tech. They swept West Virginia this year. They've been to Omaha two straight years. So I know that a lot of SEC fans, especially with the arrogance that Texas fans are going to come into, will like to say that Texas won't dominate it. But I think Texas will be in that A tier in the SEC, like A&M, like Arkansas. And, and they're going to be a lot closer to the Arkansas than the Missouris of the world. I want to ask you about A&M. Obviously, looking at their draw, I mean, they've got Stanford, uh, San Jose State, Cal State, and Fullerton. Is this a region where you foresee A&M getting to a super regional and maybe getting back to Omaha? Or is this going to be a situation where Stanford's going to be too much for A&M? As long as Stanford keeps off the black jerseys, I mean, they've been eliminated the last four times, I believe, in their black Stanford jerseys. I feel like this is definitely Stanford's loser to reach. But again, we don't know what A&M we're going to see. We could see the A&M that got swept by Arkansas and walked double-digit guys. We could see the A&M that lost to Portland earlier in the year. But the flip side of that is we could also see the A&M that should have swept Florida and took two of three from them. We could see the A&M that just went on a long run in the SEC tournament that had their pitchers pound in the zone. But again, I think Stanford definitely has the hitting talent, and especially with Quinn Matthews. If, if you get Quinn Matthews against the winner of A&M Fullerton, I think that's going to be a game that, that'll go a long way for Stanford. And if Stanford's sitting pretty in that winner's bracket, it's going to be very tough for A&M to come out. And the flip side of that is Fullerton also is a pretty challenging team. Before we kind of jump on the Stanford A&M, they took two of three from Texas, and they really battled that series, and especially Texas being a two seed. Fullerton has to feel really good about how their chances feel because they have a and lost to Texas where Fullerton beat them. Looking at this bottom half of the bracket, obviously you've got LSU as the one seed, two lanes, Sam Houston State and Oregon State. Uh, do you foresee LSU having pitching troubles against any of these teams in the Baton Rouge Regional? We're going to know how good this LSU team in this regional right off the bat with Tulane. I think if they pound the zone and, and take care of business the way that they've kind of come accustomed to, I think that this is a regional that they could dominate. But the flip side of that is anybody can beat anybody when you walk people. I mean, we saw it with LSU and Mississippi State, where Mississippi State took two of three from LSU. And I, I think Tulane is definitely probably 63 of 64 teams in this tournament with George Mason being 64. But, I mean, Sam Houston has the hitting talent. We saw it in Round Rock. Granted, LSU blew the doors off of Sam Houston, but Sam Houston had a chance to win that whole tournament. And then Oregon State has just been the class of the Pac-12. I mean, they always seem to be in that Omaha mix. If they don't go to Omaha, they're always in a super regional. So I, I could see this one going a hundred different ways, but I think if LSU or Oregon State makes it out of this regional, I think they're going to be the ones that go to Omaha just because that that'll sh I mean, with Oregon State, that's going to be a really big win over LSU. And then LSU, I think, is still the best team in the country. And if they play like the best team in the country, there's no one that can beat them even when they're on. Tell you what, Jake, looking at this next little pod, as I like to call it, it's probably the most geographically pleasing uh, college baseball pods in, in recent history in the Lexington, Kentucky region. Obviously, Kentucky is a one seed. They've got Ball State from Muncie, Indiana. they got the Indiana Hoosiers in West Virginia. What do you expect to see out of this pod? Uh, do the Wildcats advance on to the Super Regionals? Yeah, I mean, this seemed like almost where the committee started based on geography or geography. Sorry about that. Uh, I think Kentucky has to feel really good. I mean, they play an exciting brand of baseball. They led the SEC in bunts. They do a great job hitting behind the runner. And again, their pitchers throw strikes, which at the SEC has been easier said than done this year. West Virginia has definitely been sliding the wrong way. They got swept by Texas and then went two and out in the Big 12 tournament. So they're definitely not the team that they were before. But again, J.J. Weatherhold, who was Big 12 player of the year, can still carry them. I think he hit around 430. And then Indiana... I, I'm going to be honest, I didn't think Indiana was going to make it. I didn't even have them on my bubble list when I saw them when they played Texas earlier in the year. 
they, they really didn't impress me that much. And Texas kind of dominated that series. And I, I really never saw it from Indiana. And then Ball State, I wrote was good, I had all ready to write this big piece about Kent State and, and making the tournament. So Ball State's kind of my enemy number one right now because I had this big thing set up for Kent State that I had to scrap. Looking at the Auburn region, obviously Auburn, Penn, Sanford, Southern Miss, I've uh, pretty much gone on record of picking Southern Miss to get to Omaha. Uh, what do you expect to see out of Southern Miss? Are they going to come into this Auburn regional a little pissed off and a little bit of something to prove as they were kind of snubbed, as some put it, uh, from being a regional host? Yeah, and they, they definitely had the argument to be a regional host, especially how they have hosted in the past. Auburn being a 13 seed feels really, really high. I know that I was very low on Auburn for a long time. And even after they beat LSU, I felt like LSU almost beat themselves. Not really that Auburn hit their way into the series. And then when I saw them against A&M, they really, really struggled with the pitching and throwing strikes. But the last you know month and a half, they've really turned it on. And Sanford isn't a slouch either as well. I mean, they're a very talented team from a kind of under-the-radar tough conference. And then Penn with the Ivy. I mean, they dominated the Ivy. And again, the Ivy really doesn't play a ton outside of the Ivy. So we really don't know how good it is. But Penn absolutely took care of business, and, and they went undefeated. They've been sitting at home because the Ivy League was two weeks ago for some reason. So Penn um, sitting at home for the last week. So it might take them a few innings. But again, this one, you definitely feel like this is Southern Misses to lose. I'm looking down at the the bracket underneath that is the winner who's going to play the Auburn Regional. Obviously, Clemson, Lipscomb, Charlotte, Tennessee. How excited are you to watch the two orange teams, Clemson and Tennessee, face off in this regional? I'm really excited, and I'm really excited to see Charlotte, too, as well, because, I mean, they bang the ball around the yard, and they are just finally getting to their potential of what we saw earlier in the year and on paper, especially with Cam Smith kind of making them go. And then Lipscomb in the A-Sun, I think everybody kind of expected Florida Gulf Coast to come out of this. And it was definitely a weird bracket for them. So Lipscomb's going to be no slouch as well. And then the two orange teams, which are slightly different shades of orange. Clemson, definitely the hottest team in the country. I think they're 22-3 and three or 25-3 and three since um, the early March. And then Tennessee, that one will be interesting to see what Tennessee shows up. If it'll be home Lindsey Nelson, Tennessee, that's tournament tested and ready to play. Or if we'll kind of see, you know, the, the, the Jane version of Tennessee that we've seen on the road where they struggle against bad teams, uh, Grand Canyon beats them, a few other bad teams kind of beat them, and then going one and out at Hoover. I think on paper, Tennessee feels like the, the easy pick here, but again, it is away from Lindsey Nelson, so you almost have to want to go with Clemson here. Looking over at the uh, top right half of the bracket, I'm going to ask you about two regionals here, and then we'll jump down to the bottom half. Obviously, the Gainesville, Florida, with Florida, Florida A&M, Texas Tech, and UConn, which is a very solid regional. Who gets out of the Gainesville regional? Will it be the Gators? I, I have to feel like it's Florida, but at the same time, it seems like Florida kind of always messes up these regionals. They drew a UConn team who I know a lot of people kind of champion them for being a host. And they had all the numbers to host, but again, they didn't win the Big East, and they kind of fell down the stretch there. And then Texas Tech, I mean, that's another one where I think there's just such a big momentum team. They were one of the hottest teams in the country. I think they were the first one to 12 wins going 12-0. and They had that bad Texas series loss, always kind of stuck in their head. And again, they've really started to figure it out here. They are a very, very young team. They start a ton of freshmen. And it really kind of shows that the way they play ball. I mean, you'll live by the freshman. You can play all these extra innings, and the time really doesn't matter. But they're going to make mental mistakes at times. And that's the thing that really kind of scares me about that Texas Tech team is they almost feel too young. But I almost want to go out on a limb and say that Texas Tech comes out of this regional. You know, I really don't hate that pick, Jake. I, I, I watched Texas Tech as much as I could in the lifeless Big 12 championship or the Big 12 tournament. Uh, you know, I like that Texas Tech team, and much as I like Florida, I, I'm not sleeping on Texas Tech. I want to go below that in the Columbia, South Carolina bracket, a region that has Campbell, who was snubbed as a regional host, going up against the South Carolina Gamecocks and NC State. Uh, who do you see emerging from this Columbia uh, regional? I really like NC State out of this regional, and, and that really pains me to say because I was really championing for Campbell to be a host. I think that they're worthy of a host. I know that a lot of the quote-unquote fringe bubble teams that are twos are going to look at South Carolina and say, hey, that should be us. But again, they were at a time thought about as the number one team in the country not that long ago at the end of April. And I think that just kind of shows how far out in front they were. Some of 
these teams that even though they've kind of caught the injury bug and I don't really think they're going to be that competitive in this series. I think that they still are worthy of a host. And then Campbell, I mean, it seems like anytime you just give them an ounce of, of doubt, they just turn around and run with it. And NC State finally getting into the tournament, finally getting in a quote-unquote winnable regional. That one will be interesting to see how they handle it because we really haven't seen them since they went on that run and the, the, the committee kind of screwed them out of their national championship appearance. And then Central Connecticut State, I, I think that they're kind of a slouch. I know I watched them when they played LSU earlier and not in a very strong conference. But again, any of these teams that are fours, if you start walking people, which we've seen a lot of teams in the SEC do, they can beat anybody. Looking down at the uh, Stillwater Regional, obviously uh, Oklahoma State's a host. They play Oral Roberts. They've got Washington and Dallas Baptist. Uh, are you expecting big fireworks like we've seen in Stillwater in, your, in years past? I definitely am, and it pains me a little bit that DBU and Oral Roberts are so buttoned-up type teams that kind of handle their business because we almost want somebody like Arkansas and the Arkansas fans to go in there and kind of push Rock Riggio. And I think that that kind of plays into DBU and Oral Roberts' favor. I mean, there's been at times where it seems like Oklahoma State has just looked dazed and lost, and they really kind of have to make their own energy. And DBU and Oral Roberts are two, I think, of the most talented two seeds and four seeds. I mean, DBU had a legitimate argument to be a number one. And then Washington kind of playing for the pride of the West Coast. Not a ton of West Coast teams. So I guess Washington kind of bears that burden. But I I would be really shocked if Oklahoma State comes out of this with zero losses. And it wouldn't surprise me to see DBU or Roberts sitting and playing in that championship game. I want to ask you about Indiana State, a team that has done well this season. Uh, the only mid-major is a host this season. How big is that for mid-major college baseball to have a regional there in Terre Haute, Indiana? Yeah, they're another team that a lot of fans are going to point at and say, hey, like we're better than them. But if Indiana State can't host, then a mid-major shouldn't ever host. I mean, they went out and they played some talented teams, and they went out and dominated their conference in just about every facet. And I think that they are worthy of it. The one that I'm a little bit surprised at is Iowa as a two and North Carolina as a three. Those almost feel like they should be flip-flopped just the way that they kind of went down the stretch. But, you know, Iowa with Brody backed and, and Keaton Anthony, and it depends which Keaton Anthony we see if he's even going to be there because with the looming investigation and everything, he sat out a few weeks. But, I, I mean, I think Iowa has the talent to even go to Omaha. The sky's the limit on them with Iowa – But again, we really haven't seen them play a quote-unquote competitive team since that Round Rock series that was all the way back in early, early March. That was kind of when everybody found out about Brody Beck. So that one will be interesting. And then Wright State, I think, is a very talented four as well. They've been to, you know, the tournament a few years, looking to finally kind of break through, get into that Super Regional. I think that they've been the most appearances without making a Super Regional. So really kind of rooting for Wright State to come out of that one. Jake, I want to ask you, these are the last two questions I have for you. Uh, there have been a lot of talk the last two or three years about moving the SEC tournament out of Hoover, and you're not necessarily an SEC guy. You were a national college baseball guy. What do you what do you make of those talks, and should the Southeastern Conference move the conference baseball tournament out of the Hoover for Met? I don't think that they should because it is an absolute perfect location for all the SEC teams to go. I know that Alabama is really close to them, but they are the central factor of it. I think if you move it anywhere else, like Atlanta, you would give Georgia and South Carolina a big leg up on the Texas schools. If you move it to Dallas or Houston, it gives a huge advantage to Texas A&M and Oklahoma. So that's kind of their base. I think that Hoover is the perfect middle ground. And again, it has a small town ballpark feel. It feels like SEC baseball. You can camp out in the parking lot. I mean, remember when Florida went and played at Las Vegas? or TCU in the national championship, and they didn't let them tailgate like that. I think that you always have to leave it at a spot like Hoover that allows you to come in and be the best show in town because it really is a Dittness atmosphere. It's almost like a a precursor to Omaha where everybody there cares about baseball. Jake, I'm going to have to tell you, next season, you know, when Texas and OU and A&M are all there, I'm going to have to have you come up and I'll introduce you to some of them Cajuns that have been (laughs) tailgating for 27 years, man, because my God almighty, they can cook some food down in there. I, I met a few of them last year in Omaha, and then obviously being in Houston after post Katrina, there's a ton of Cajuns. So I definitely don't dust my crawfish. So uh, as long as the Cajuns are that, I feel like I'll fit right in with them. Jake, last question I have for him. I'll put you on the spot, though. Give me your Omaha eight as of Monday Memorial Day before the NCAA tournament starts. 
Maryland, Texas, LSU, Clemson, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, Virginia, and Texas Tech. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Who's your national champion? That one's going to be a little bit tougher. Um, I really like Vandy. I think that Vandy, uh-huh. they they take care of business, and it seems like every time that you doubt Vandy and go to write them off, they end up going on a roll and beating someone. And as I think that their bullpen is going to be their Achilles heel like LSU. But I, I really like Vandy to kind of win it all if I'm making me pick at 529. I will say, uh, you know, I have a lot of Arkansas people that listen. They've all asked me, you know, who was my national champion. I'm picking the Razorbacks to finally break through and to win a national championship. I, I just love what Dan, uh, you know, Coach Van Horn's been doing there. And it's about time the squirrel finds his nut here in Arkansas. That would be hilarious because there's been so many, I think, more talented Arkansas teams in the past years. I mean, even in recent memory. And it seems like this Arkansas team just finds ways to win. I mean, they really don't have the headliner like, Ben Intendi or cops or anything like that. I, I always use the uh, the gif of uh, Al Davis, just win, baby. That's how I feel watching Arkansas baseball. <laughs> Jake, thank you so much for coming on the Mitch Davis show, and uh, I hope to see you in three weeks out there in Omaha. Of course, Mitch. Hopefully your, your Southern Miss Golden Eagles make it out there and, and we can get you some jello shots at Rocco's. Man, I uh, I was dominating the Ole Miss jello shots last year because <laughs> you know, in the SIP we know how to party. So hoping uh, Southern Miss gets out there would be really cool to – See the state of Mississippi win another national championship. Thanks, Mitch, for having me on. You have been listening to the Mitch Davis Show. I've been your host, Mitch Davis, founder of the Mitch Davis Show.com podcast, a host of the Mitch Davis Show. Follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. A very special thank you to Jake McKeever for coming on, talking all things college baseball. It's regional weekend. It's going to be an exciting weekend of college baseball. And be sure you check out the Cotton States Baseball League in New Albany, Mississippi. There being a park, it is just going to be really, truly a phenomenal summer of baseball in New Albany, Mississippi. Again, I've been your host, Mitch Davis. Follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. And thank you for listening to the Mitch Davis Show.